Hello friends, today I want to show you how I'd use the shadows and highlights macro that I created in a previous video to add shadows and highlights to this drawing that I created last week to create this effect. <whistles> along with plenty of tips for adding shadows and highlights along the way. And you can watch how I drew this by following the link above or catching it at the end of this video. And do stay tuned to the end to find out how you can get hold of this macro. But first, let's jump straight into open tunes. So here's the drawing and I've got it all in one column and this could easily be the first frame of an animation so the amount of effort you put into adding the shadows could vary depending on the amount of detail you want to add and the time you want to spend adding them. So first let's add two new levels and you can use any level type that you'd like but I really like using the two raster levels because you can change their colours after painting with them and you'll see that shortly. So first let's add one level for the shadows, another one for the highlights, and let's name these columns. So now we won't get confused to which column is which. And one tip I'll give you up front is to lock the main character column so you don't accidentally paint in there. So just press the padlock button to the side of the column header. So now we can add the macro, and if you've downloaded it from my Patreon page, just copy it to the macro FX folder you can find the address just there. And then the next time you're in OpenTunes, it'll be available. So then back in OpenTunes, if we switch to a room with the schematics in it, now choose the schematic room here. And then change the schematic view from stage to FX by clicking the button at the bottom right here. Then just right click on the background and then add effects. And for the macro menu, choose the shadows and highlights macro. And then we simply plug the three columns into this macro. So we've got the main character first into the center, shadows at the top here, highlights at the bottom, and then plug the macro directly into the X sheet. And then we can go back to the drawing room and simply start painting. So for the shadows, I'll use the first palette entry that's set up with black here, but you can and should use more palette entries. So you might change, for instance, the alpha of one of the entries by bringing this down to give you a lighter shadow or you might add a hint of color into the shadow to reflect what's around the character but don't forget that as we're on a tunes raster level you can paint with the color and then change it afterwards to see how it looks on the character and you can use any of the drawing tools the standard brush the paintbrush fill bucket geometry tools or whatever but I'll use the standard brush today mainly because I can adjust the pressure on it to have different size painting widths on my brush. And then we can just start painting. And if you make a mistake, just grab the eraser and remove it. And as you're working on a different level to the main drawing and to the highlights level, you can erase much quicker, knowing that you're not affecting the other levels. And to make it easier to see where you want to paint up to, you can change the opacity of the column. And this gives you a little bit of a preview of how the shadow will look in the final output. So simply click on the drop down next to shadow and bring down the opacity. And find a, a level that suits you. And don't be afraid to paint bigger than you might expect. Remember, with both the shadows and highlights having some blur, the effect will appear smaller than your painted area. And don't worry about painting outside the character as the macro will only show the shadow over the character itself. And you can see that by hitting the preview button at the top of the viewer here. And you can see me hitting the preview button a lot as I'm painting the shadow so I can check that the shadow looks how I expect it to look. Another tip, try not to paint over whole areas of colour with shadow. Otherwise your viewer won't see the difference between areas in and out of shadow. Having that change in colour really helps to sell the shadow effect. So now let's go ahead and paint the highlights. So moving to the highlights column, I'll add a new palette entry and I'll choose white this time to paint them on. Again, using the brush. So I'll be very careful, I just paint over some of the edges of the character. And again, as you can see, the white is painting all the way over the top of the character. You can't see through to where the highlight will be shown. So I will turn down the opacity which again gives us a slight hint of how the highlight will look. 
So there we go, that's the shadows and highlights painted over the character there. But as the macro is just a wrapper for the built-in effects, don't forget that you can still adjust the effect that are part of this macro. So if we go to the schematic view and turn on the preview, and then select on the macro, and I've got the effect panel docked here at the right hand side of the screen, just be behind me here. If you haven't got it docked, then just double click on the macro to get the effect settings. So if you want to make the effect darker or lighter, you can adjust the transparency here of either the shadows or the highlights to make them more pronounced or less so. And again, for the highlights, we can give a brighter glow to those depending where the character's standing and what lights are around the character. Or you might decide to change the blur for the glow or the shadows to create a softer look to the shadow. But do remember that one of the benefits of creating this macro is to store the settings that suit your characters. So if you found the values that suit them, save that as another macro so you can use them again. So here's the final piece. And I hope you'll agree that by adding the shadows and highlights, it really adds some depth to the character. And admittedly, I have added a lot of shadow and highlights to this character to give a flavor of what you can do. But even just adding a simple rim highlight and shadow to your characters in your animations can really make them pop. And if you want to get hold of this macro to try out adding shadows and highlights this way, then follow the link down below to my Patreon and you'll find the macro attached to the post with this video. And if you're interested in adding your own shadows and highlights this way, then I know you'll find these two videos useful, so why not take a look at those? And I'll see you next time for another video. And that's a guarantee.